Cataclysm changes up the tanking meta quite a bit, not only due to the balancing of each class, but because of the encounter design and the heroic rates. Since thus far Blizzard has been sticking to the last patch version of the original expansion, it's safe to assume we'll be receiving Cataclysm balancing from the patch 4.3.4. That has huge implications in the early game for Warriors and Paladins. Things are of course subject to change, as the hashtag no changes days are far gone. But with the information we have, this is how the tanking meta will look in Cataclysm. Starting off with the Kings of Wrath, Paladins. Paladins and Wrath of the Lich King had the advantage of Divine Sacrifice, reducing the overall weight damage by 20% with improved DSAC. What will be different in Cataclysm, however, is that only Protection Paladins will have access to this spell. This is both a kiss and a curse for Paladin tanks looking to secure a raid spot in the roster. The pro being that it gives them a unique raid cooldown that can provide incredible value, but the con being that you can no longer build raid comps around having DSAC anymore. On fights like Algalon, you could have DSAC for every dying star. On Lich King, you can have DSAC for every infest. But when you no longer can use DSAC for a mechanic every time, then the individual DSAC loses value. With all that though, they still have incredible utility. Handsack, freedom, and absolutely insane defensive cooldowns. Guardian of the Ancient Kings, which is your new shield wall ability, has a 3 minute cooldown and lasts for 12 seconds. But with Tier 11 Fortet, that gets bumped up to 18 seconds. Ardent Defender is now a 20% damage reduction cooldown with the ability to cheat death if you take a fatal blow while it's up. A lot of mechanics can be cheats with this ability, as we will see in Firelands. And of course, you have DSAC and a 20% damage reduction in Divine Protection. During progression, Paladins will not be the strongest main tank. They will also not have the highest damage output as an off tank. A lot of people will place Prop Paladin as number 3 pick in Cataclysm for raiding, and for the most part, I agree. That being said, I have a sneaking suspicion that they will have much more value than people think, especially in 25 man heroic rating. In terms of the tier list, Paladins earn themselves a spot in the A tier. Then for the other tank that will be fighting for the position of off tank versus the Paladin, the Feral Druid. The reason why Feral Druids tend to be the favorite off tank in Cataclysm is due to the high damage output they can have while not tanking. The Prune Talent Trees have a ton of overlap between Bear and Cat Talents. That means the Feral off tanks will have higher damage output than the main tank, despite the main tank having several thousand extra attack power due to Vengeance. And while Mastery is not the absolute best stat for survivability, being able to stack it for the cat damage it provides and then still gain defensive value from it is incredibly strong. Not to mention that you'll access to combat dress and most druids will be running the Glyph of Rebirth, meaning that the target will be rest with 100% HP. I expect most guilds to gain the most value from having a Feral Druid as the off tank. And in a 10 man scenario, Feral Druid will be the undisputed off tank king. But due to the lack of raid cooldown, utility, and not the best survivability, they get to share the A spot with Prop Paladins. Moving on to the new kings of tanking, Blood Death Knight. The new master system came in and made red a part of the color you'll be seeing towards the top of the healing meters. Not only did Death Strike healing get increased from a flat 10% to a dynamic heal that can heal up to 20%, but the mastery also adds a shield on herself based on how much mastery we have. Already from the moment you take level 85, you'll be close to 100% added bonus. So if you heal 20% with your Death Strike, it effectively heals you for 40% of your HP. You have a high health pool, which makes you benefit more from the Vengeance system, but your damage is already pretty strong. Glyphs like Glyph of Heart Strike gives your ability an extra 30% damage increase, making you hit like a truck. You have a Shield Wall, Dancing Rune Weapon giving you 20% parry, Bone Shield reducing your damage taken for 20% for 6 hits, Rune Tap, 30 second Blood Tap, Vamp Blood, Blood Worms that actually do a significant amount of raid healing, DKs even get a Battle Rest which is invaluable in 10 man scenarios. DKs get a bunch of quality of life additions in Kata, like being able to apply both diseases with a 30 second cooldown spell, Death and Decay only costing one unholy rune, and so much more. Death Knight has it all, and every single raid group going into heroic content will have a blood DK, which is why they earn their spot in the S tier. The last spec is Protection Warrior, and it's unfortunately dead on arrival. If we have the 4.3.4 tuning, warriors won't be able to hit avoidance cap until the end of Firelands, Due to how much warriors depend on block values, this makes them the worst tank in early Cataclysm by far. That being said, they still have some redeeming qualities. They have incredible damage output in AoE scenarios with the ability to spread rend with Thunderclap and will probably be the best tank in the game for those looking to dungeon level in Cataclysm launch. 
There are a few bosses where warriors can edge a spot over a feral druid as an off tank where there are many adds to handle, like Nefarian and Metaloriac. But I have a hard time justifying a warrior over a prop paladin. They'll be decently strong towards the end of Firelands and Dragon Soul, but for now, they take their place in the C tier. Like I've alluded to before, this is based on all the classes being in their 4.3.4 state, but things could change. Just keep in mind that if you're in a progression guild and you're looking to keep your raid spot, then being able to adapt to the meta will be quite important in Cataclysm. I'll be looking to make more in-depth videos for each of the tanks in Cataclysm over the next few months. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure to subscribe. But that is all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.